Hi, welcome to Odyssey Academy. I'm Stacy Delzite, Manager of Transportation Technical Solutions here at Intersys. Before we get started, I just want to give a little background on why we are showing Odyssey and North Star branded batteries in the presentation today. Back in 2019, Intersys, who has been producing the Odyssey brand battery for nearly 25 years, purchased North Star. The two batteries are very similar, both using a technology called thin plate pure lead. If you aren't familiar with thin plate pure lead technology, our Odyssey Academy trainings will help explain some of the unique features of this product. Our training topic today is thin plate pure lead versus absorbed glass mat batteries. So let's go ahead and get started. At the end of our training, you should understand the chemical reaction that happens in lead acid batteries and recognize some of the differences between absorbed glass mat and thin plate pure lead batteries. You'll also have an opportunity to have specific questions answered. We'll get started by taking a look at the different types of lead acid batteries that are on the market. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few different battery types available. Today in our training, we're going to focus on absorbed glass mat batteries and thin plate pure lead batteries, and we will compare and contrast some of the features and applications that these batteries are used in. Now we'll discuss how a battery works. As I mentioned, we need two dissimilar metals to be the electrodes inside the battery. What we're showing here are the chemical equations for the positive plate, the negative plate, and the overall battery. We're not going to go too deep into these chemical reactions, but we can recognize that the positive plate is different than the negative plate. So we have dissimilar metals. When those two plates are combined inside the battery, we have lead dioxide from the positive plate, lead from the negative plate, and the electrolyte that's used is sulfuric acid. So the left side of this equation represents a charged battery. When the battery is discharged, the sulfate from sulfuric acid attaches to the plates and that leaves us with lead sulfate and water inside the battery. Then by recharging the battery, we reverse that reaction and the components go back into what we show on this side of the equation. The good thing about secondary batteries is that this reaction can be done many, many times and as the battery is discharged and recharged. We'll discuss some of the features of absorbed glass mat batteries. Traditional AGM batteries use a lead calcium grid alloy. The calcium doesn't cause gassing internally, so that means the batteries are maintenance free and you don't have to add water to them. But unfortunately, the calcium also changes the grain structure of the lead and makes the grids very susceptible to corrosion. If those grids break down due to corrosion, the battery is going to fail. The oxide that's used in AGM batteries is porous. Oxide is the main ingredient in active material that is applied to grids. The active material is what allows the battery to provide capacity and performance when the battery is operating in the application. So with that oxide being porous, it means that the active material tends to shed off the plates, so it's not available to be a part of that chemical reaction. AGM batteries are typically single purpose by design. They are either good at starting applications or deep cycle applications. Remember, a starting application needs high current for a very short period of time, like when you're starting your automobile, and a deep cycle application needs lower current for a longer period of time, something like an electric trolling motor. 
So AGM batteries can do one or the other of those two things, but they're not going to be good at doing both. And finally, AGM batteries use lead terminals and polypropylene plastics. Moving on to discuss some details about thin plate pure lead batteries. These batteries use 99% pure lead for their grids and oxide. That does several things first for us. First of all, pure lead has a really fine grain structure, which means that it's very resistant to corrosion. We talked about how corrosion of the lead calcium alloy causes that grid to break down. Well, with the pure lead alloy, that grid remains intact for the lifetime of the battery. These batteries use really thin grids, which means we can put more plates per cell. More plates per cell means there's more surface area, so the battery is able to provide high current when needed. The oxide that is used, um, oxide is the main ingredient in the active material that is put onto the grid. The oxide is very fine and dense, which means that it adheres to the grids well, and we don't have to worry about it shedding off the plate and the battery losing capacity. Probably the most important thing that the pure lead does for the battery is that it makes the battery dual purpose by design. That means the battery can perform really well in starting applications where you need high cold cranking amps, and it also performs well in deep cycle applications where you need less current but for a longer period of time. We're used to seeing 400 cycles all the way down to 80% depth of discharge. So just a few more comments. These batteries have brass terminals, while many batteries have lead terminals. Brass is more conductive than lead, which improves the ability of the battery to provide and accept high amounts of current. Most of our batteries use polycarbonate plastics for the containers and covers. Not all models, but most of them do. Polycarbonate is a strong, rugged plastic, and it helps maintain the compression of the battery and also allows for higher operating temperatures. They perform really well at low temperatures, and we're going to discuss more about that later so you'll get some more details. They have very low internal resistance. We've already talked about that some and how it allows the battery to provide high current when needed. It also means they can accept high current when being charged, and that reduces your overall charging time. They also have very low self-discharge rate. Again, we'll have some more details about that later in the presentation. And then finally, as far as safety considerations go, really the only thing you need to be aware of is that the correct charge algorithm is being used. Ideally, you're going to have a charger that has a thin plate pure lead algorithm with temperature compensation. I mentioned earlier that the different grid alloys used by AGM and thin plate pure lead batteries has a really big impact on the battery's performance. And we're showing some pictures here to just back up that point. Um, what we're showing on the top is a brand new lead calcium positive grid. And you see that grid looks nice. All the, the members, the cross members and the vertical members are intact. Um, and then as you move across from left to right, the grid is 80 days old, and then 320 days old, and then finally 400 days old. And you can just see how the corrosion has an impact over time. When those grid members begin to break and fall apart, that's when the battery fails because it can no longer, you know, the current can't spread through the battery as needed. At the bottom, what we're showing is a thin plate pure lead grid at 400 days old so you know same operating conditions it's, it's been you know under the same conditions for 400 days and you can see that it is it's in perfect condition so obviously that's going to have a huge impact on how the battery performs looking at some of the design features that are different between thin plate pure lead and agm batteries for just a little bit 
Um, all lead acid batteries are made up of two volt cells. So each 12 volt battery has six two volt cells that have to be connected internally. In the Odyssey thin plate pure lead design, we use what is called an over the wall connection. You can see here there's a the strap from this cell that goes up over the cell partition and to connect to the strap from the other cell. And that is a very low resistant, very robust connection. In the traditional AGM battery, you can see here there are a couple of tombstones, we call them, and they are pinch welded. It actually, there's a hole in the partition, and those two tombstones are, are welded together. So it's not as strong and robust a connection as the over the wall connectors that are used in thin plate pure lead. The other difference, thin plate pure lead, you know, we say it in the name thin plate. Um, so we can get 19 plates per cell in, in this particular design. There's 19 plates per cell and that is going to increase the surface area which makes the cranking performance these batteries can provide a tremendous amount of cranking current in the traditional agm design the plates are thicker so you can only get about 15 plates per cell so the cranking performance they, they can't provide as much current because the surface area is not there Let's talk a little bit about how long thin plate pure lead batteries last compared to absorbed glass mat batteries. One of the main factors that impacts how long a battery lasts or its cycle life is what we call depth of discharge. Depth of discharge is a measure of how much capacity is removed from a battery compared to how much capacity the battery has to offer. So if you have a 100 amp hour battery and remove 20 amp hours, that would be a 20% depth of discharge. If you remove 80 amp hours from a 100 amp hour battery, that would be an 80% depth of discharge. So looking at this chart, we can see at various depths of discharge that TPPL has much longer cycle life than absorbed glass mat in every case. At 80% depth of discharge, TPPL provides twice the cycle life of a traditional absorbed glass mat battery. Another factor to consider when comparing absorbed glass mat and thin plate pure lead batteries is shelf life. All batteries self discharge over time. And one of the worst things you can do to a battery is leave it in a discharge condition for a long period of time. Now, how fast a battery discharges is impacted by temperature. So warmer temperatures increase the rate of self-discharge, cooler temperatures decrease the rate of self-discharge. And ideally, we'd like batteries to stay above a 50% state of charge in order for them to be healthy and perform like you want them to when you take them off the shelf. So with absorbed glass mat batteries, you have about 12 months for the battery to reach 50% state of charge at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. At the same temperature, thin plate pure lead, you have about 24 months for the battery to reach 50% state of charge. So twice the shelf life, that means you're not going to have to boost the thin plate pure lead battery nearly as often as you will that absorbed glass mat. Here we are comparing standard AGM, Odyssey Performance, Odyssey Extreme, and North Star Pro batteries. We're looking at several different characteristics and then using this red, yellow, green key for good, better, best and applying that to each of the battery types. You see that the Odyssey Extreme and the North Star Pro batteries scored all in the green category. And that's for several reasons that we've talked about today. The thin plate pure lead technology means that those batteries have the lowest self discharge of any battery type, and they also have really good recharging capability. 
the brass terminals used on those batteries have a higher conductivity rating compared to lead terminals on the other batteries. And that means the, the brass terminals allow for higher current to go through them without any issues. Those two batteries also use the over the wall top lead design. We've talked about that earlier, but um, it has lower internal resistance, which means that the battery is gonna have higher capacity overall. And then also they use the thin plate pure lead technology again. So what that does for us is the thin plates mean that we can put more plates per cell and when you have more plates, that means you have higher surface area and the battery can provide really high cranking current. And then finally, both of those batteries use a polycarbonate um, base material. Polycarbonate is just a really rugged, strong plastic material. It helps with the compression of the battery and also allows for operating temperatures up to 80 degrees Celsius. So just to wrap things up today and reiterate a few points we've made, thin plate pure lead batteries use 99% pure lead. And that is going to reduce the corrosion inside the batteries. It improves the charging and discharging characteristics. It means the batteries have a very low rate of self-discharge and the batteries have very low internal resistance. Most absorbed glass mat batteries are typically single purpose. Um, you're either going to have one that's good at starting or good at doing some shallow deep cycling, but it's not going to be good at doing both of those things. Thin plate pure lead is dual purpose by design. Um, not only does the battery provide really high cold cranking amps in starting applications, it can also provide 400 cycles at 80% depth of discharge in deep cycle applications. We certainly want to thank you for taking time to attend our webinar today on thin plate pure lead versus absorbed glass mat batteries. We're going to be doing more of these webinar trainings in the future, so stay tuned for the additional topics that we're going to cover. If you've got any questions that weren't answered today, feel free to email me at stacy.delzite at intersys.com, or you can also call our technical support group at 1-800-964-2837. Thanks.